Good afternoon. Welcome to our service today. Over the last number of weeks, we've been uh, having a series of services dedicated to time to share. Uh, today's service and the one coming this Sunday uh, is going to be the concluding part of that series, uh, and it's time for us to celebrate. As the cover on the folder says, uh, Celebration Sunday. And uh, so may God bless our celebration uh, of all his blessings in our Christian life, especially as we focus in on the blessings of the Lord that he brings to us through word and sacrament. We'll begin our service. If you turn to uh, the first page, the greeting on page four, there is a response that I'd like to use today uh, before our first hymn. This is the day the Lord has made. Our first hymn, all people that on earth do dwell. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins. Holy and gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord of grace and love, we praise you for the manifold blessings you so richly bestow on us every day. Fill us with thankful and rejoicing hearts. Teach us to gratefully acknowledge your bounty and the outpouring of every spiritual blessing. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this afternoon from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 16, uh, reminds us of the central element whenever we come before the, the Lord as did these Old Testament people, Uh, In celebration, the central element of that celebration is our joy in God and the blessings he gives, particularly in the blessing of his promised son. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, the Levites in your towns, and the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows living among you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and follow carefully these decrees. The festival of tabernacles. Celebrate the festival of tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival. You, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, 
the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns. For seven days celebrate the festival to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands, and your joy will be complete. Three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, at the festival of the unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. The word of the Lord. And we'll join in our psalm for today, Psalm 150. We'll sing the refrain and the verses together. epistle lesson in Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse four, the Apostle Paul carries on the theme of joy and rejoicing uh, that we just sang in the psalm, and uh, his uh, invocation, his command is uh, understood very clearly. This will also serve as a sermon text today. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Please rise for today's gospel. 
Your words are my joy and my delight. In the Holy Gospel recorded in Luke chapter 15, verses 3 through 10, one of Jesus' very familiar parables where he leaves the 99 sheep and he goes after one, uh, reminds us that uh, uh, how precious our place in God's hands in the Lord really is. Uh, you know, so many people uh, in business today say that you have to allow for things uh, to happen for setbacks, and you have to cut your losses is the, the terminology. Jesus never cuts his losses. Even for one, he goes to seek that which is lost. And so he told them this parable. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I'll t I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Our next hymn, the hymn of the day, oh, that I had a thousand voices. Uh, the number listed, if you're using the, the hymn, blue hymn, though, is 484. 484. i 
We turn back to our text for today in uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, uh, chapter 4, uh, beginning at verse 4, the, the noted words uh, that uh, really form the bulk of our service today and our attention, where Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Now, in the name of our Savior Jesus, who would restore to you the joy of your salvation, dear children of God. What makes you happy? Why do you have that smile on your face? Uh, someone might uh, answer that question by saying, I bet you're up to no good. But really, there can be any number of endless reasons that elicit joy in our life. Uh, from the big things, uh, things like uh, your wedding, or things like the birth of a child. What more reason could we have for joy than things like that? In fact, isn't it true that I don't think you've ever found a card on the shelf that says, wishing you a sad anniversary, or wishing you an unhappy birthday. See, we, don't, we don't think in that terms. And in fact, uh, isn't it true that one of the reasons, because these are such joyous occasions that we want to celebrate them annually, every year. And to show our joy, what is one of the things that typically we do when someone has a birthday or an anniversary? We'll bring them a gift, don't we? Uh, to show that we, we want to share in their joy. We, we want to help to make this a, a happy time for them. But it's not just the big things of life that bring us joy. I think also the, the smaller, the littler things, uh, like, I know it's fall, but I was thinking ahead to spring already. Like the first robin that you see, right? Uh, I'm always happy to see the first robin, I think, because it, it's a message that spring is just around the corner and that the doldrums of winter are, are about over. But uh, I also like to be the one on the block to say it first. I'm kind of smug about that. If I see a robin first and no one else has, I have to do what? I have to tell them. Did you see the first robin? I did. You know, you make this announcement because you're excited about it. You're, you're pretty happy about that. Joy in life is really good for us, both mentally, physically, and spiritually. When we are full of joy, things go a little smoother. Things run a little better. Everything seems to find some harmony when we rejoice. In fact, when the frontal lobe of your brain produces serotonin, and dopamine, that's what brings about or creates the reaction of joy so that you want to dance in the rain. You may remember that old song, Dancing in the Rain, with uh, Kelly, what was his name? Gene Kelly, thank you. Yeah, Dancing in the Rain. So even though it's gloomy and sad and otherwise people are kind of down, we'll still dance around in it. So wouldn't it be wonderful then, understanding that, to be joyful all the time? Every moment of life. Don't we prefer joy over sadness and sorrow? Don't we... Or wouldn't we rather be joyful uh, and upbeat in the company of others rather than to be the old grumpy 
complaining person that sometimes we're noted to be? See, the Apostle Paul would agree with, with that sentiment, wouldn't he? In fact, what does he say to us? What does he make clear to you? Rejoice always in the Lord. And if you didn't get it the first time he said it, he says it again. And I say it again, rejoice always. When we stop and think about it, however, isn't that kind of a pipe dream? I mean, after all, is it really possible for us in the world we live in to have perpetual, unending joy, never to be down, where when you get up in the morning, the wrong side of bed isn't your friend, it's your enemy, where we embrace the days that the Lord gives us it's hard because we know that that window of joy that we so often experience in the days of our life, that little bit is just what that is. It's, it's only a small fraction. And how quickly can what appears to be a good thing, a thing that's going forward, a thing that we're happy about, turn into calamity, disaster? And you've had those days, I've had them, where one thing is piled on top of another and another and another and another. And the more that gets piled on, the more we start to slouch, the more we get disheartened, the less joyful we are, and our mood gradually gets worse. So that we don't want to be around anybody, and we prefer that no one else be around us. You been there? Sure you have. You know about those times, those difficult moments. So, how is it possible then to follow the Apostle's directive here? Rejoice always. You know, one of the reasons why joy fails us so many times is because we have the wrong perspective or we're looking for joy in all the wrong places. We think joy is found most of the time in the circumstance of life around us. We judge it on the basis of how things are going or how they're not going, their absence. And we kind of get elated if we can find just an ounce or two of joy in any given thing at any given time. I I couldn't help but remember back to the days we used to take kids to our church youth group. Uh, Oh, we'd go down, we were close enough to get down to Six Flags, Great America, you know the place? Or something similar to that, right? (laughs) It was amazing to me. Kids would get off the bus and they'd run to get their ticket and then they'd go to the newest, fastest ride in the park. And they'd stand in line. This is no kidding. And I'd watch this. They'd stand in line for like 20 to 30 minutes to get on the hop-a-flop ride or whatever it is. I, I can't even remember all the names, the creative names they have. To get on that ride... And after that time in the beating sun, how long did it last? Maybe 60 seconds. And it's over. And it's interesting, their reaction. Some of them, oh, wasn't that cool? Wasn't that great? And they'd be dumb, I'm sorry. They'd be energetic enough, I'll use that word, to get back in line again for another round. And some of them would say, it's not worth it. That was, that was over-advertised, over-extended. And I think that's a pretty good picture of why so often we lose sight of what Paul is saying and the understanding that joy in our life is invested not in the circumstances, the things, but one object. 
don't miss what Paul says here. And it's easy, I think, to read over that because we, we see that word always, but always has an object. And the object of joy is rejoice in Christ always. In fact, there's, there's a, a better understanding of that word always that, that uh, I think implies not every second. It's not just a time word, but it's a, a word that says all your days. Regardless of what that day may bring. Regardless if you're young or old, sick or healthy, you have every reason to remain joy-filled because the object of your joy remains Christ. Now let's just think about that for a second. What is it, what is it that Jesus brings permanently to our life that changes our outlook and our perspective on everything else? Everything that we have determined to be sad and sorrowful and so bad takes on a new light when you understand that Jesus, number one, uh, is always your Savior. We can rejoice always because there's not a day in that span of life that he gives us that he is not the one who has saved me from all my sin. What is his promise to you? Lo, I am with you always, How long? Even unto the end of the world. So you're not going through anything as hard as you think it is, as tough as you think it is, by yourself. He's he's out there. That's why I appreciated the parable so much about the lost sheep today. Because it fits there, doesn't it? Uh, Jesus' love is singled out because it, it has an object. It's not just collective, the 99, but it has an individual object. And out of all those sheep, who is his attention focused in on the closest? The one that's missing. The one that's lost. And he doesn't spare a thing until he finds it. And then in finding it, in recovering it, what does he say he wants? Rejoice with me. Let the angels in heaven rejoice because the lost has been found. There is more joy in heaven over one sinner who is, in a sense, repents, or who is turned around, who is found. The joy of the angels in heaven. Because Jesus saved them, saved us, you, and because Jesus is the one who found you. Rejoice. And I will say it again. Did you hear it the first time? Rejoice always, all your days. Never a reason not to have the joy of Christ. Today we're going to come once again, as the privilege gives us, to come to the Lord's Supper. What does that tell you about the the center of your joy? Uh, We come to the Lord's Supper for the strengthening of our faith. We receive his true body and blood for an assurance, right? That our sins are forgiven. Do you, do you realize what that means? Every day of your life, every moment, his true body and blood is there to assure you that he doesn't remember your sin. They're forgiven. They're gone. What a reason to be joyful. What a reason to celebrate in the Lord. There's another passage that comes to mind in regard to how Jesus looks to us. Uh, When Jesus went to Jerusalem for the last time, the Bible tells us, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. You think of any other reason for you to be as joyful because Jesus rejoiced to die for you. Jesus rejoiced 
that in his perfect life and innocent death, you would have life forever. Rejoice in the Lord always. And so we come to the end of these time to share services uh, in which we've had each separate themes uh, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, as we th- reflect, we celebrate. Now, I want to have you be careful that you don't celebrate here for the wrong reason. There's a lot of smiling faces here at Christ over these last number of weeks since uh, we're now in our new church, uh, since dedication, and uh, uh, it's wonderful to see that. But don't celebrate for the wrong reason. Right? Because newness is wonderful. Uh, I got a couple new cars over the years of my life, and I was pretty happy about the way they smelled and the way they looked. But you know, the longer you drive them, the less attention, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the less attention I seem to pay to it. And uh, the the smell, it it starts to stink after a while, frankly. I mean, the more you use it, it just kind of newness wears off. And then pretty soon you've got a mechanical problem and this goes wrong and that goes wrong. And what happens to the joy you initially had in it? out the window. So don't celebrate here over the wrong thing. It's wonderful that God has blessed us, blessed our congregation uh, with what he has given here, but the center of joy is that this church focuses your attention through the word and the sacrament on the object of joy. And then that'll never fade. That'll never go away. And in response to that celebration, as you would celebrate an anniversary of someone else, as you would celebrate a wedding where we started today. One of the ways we do that is with our gifts, with how the Lord has blessed us. And uh, so, as the Lord moves you, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Amen. Please rise. We'll join now in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 10. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, gotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And today, special prayers are requested uh, for the following members. Uh, Judy Olson is having surgery tomorrow. I believe that's an outpatient procedure, but we pray for the Lord's blessing on that. Uh, Ray Alstein also uh, having some surgery uh, that is on the outpatient nature. 
and Jim Fell, who is recovering at home following a rather critical surgery that he had. So we include all of these people and all those who are sick or hurting in our prayers today. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those who, whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for faith, have mercy on those for whom death draws near. And compassionate Father, in your mercy, you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick or suffering to your tender care. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if suffering must linger. Help our loved ones to find strength through Jesus and his cross and resurrection during this time of physical weakness. May the work of the Holy Spirit teach them to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. And hear us, Lord, as we bring and pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. At this time, I'd remind you, uh, to, if you haven't done so, fill out the care cards that are in the pew and uh, turn them into the offering plate uh, as it's passed. And then there's an insert in today's worship folder uh, called Time to Share. And uh, this is, uh, you may have already filled one of these out and returned it. Uh, these are included today if you have not done that. And... Um, uh, it would be helpful if you, there's supposed to be like three square boxes next to the bold print statements. They didn't get printed for whatever reason, but uh, what you can do is circle, circle what applies to you, okay? Um, and so if you've already turned in your time to share promise sheet, circle that. That'll work. If your visitor is here today and uh, would, we'd ask that you pray for the blessings of uh, time to share, and uh, the third one, if you don't have the promise sheet with you today, but would plan to return it in the next few weeks, we'd like to know that as well. So uh, if you have your, your promise sheets, please put them in the plate or fill this out 
and please place that in the plate today with your offerings. At this time, we'll take the offering. We prepare now to receive the Lord's Supper. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give thanks to you, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. ask everyone to please come forward uh, and we'll have one table uh, so uh, this side can be on this side and this side on this side and uh, we'll see how that works out today so God bless us as we receive his true body and blood please rise our service closes on page 17 give thanks to the Lord for he is good Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace.
We'll con close our service with the final hymn today. Please be seated. A uh, number of announcements in the bulletin for you today. Um, I think most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Um, classes that are coming up. I, I do have one personal announcement to make uh, to you um, that relates to uh, Life with God and the Bible information class that was scheduled to be held starting tomorrow. And then also to the uh, senior ministry program that we were to initiate this coming Monday. Uh, because of uh, some family health concerns and medical concerns, uh, I'm going to have to give up a couple of my duties uh, in serving you here at Christ. And uh, those instruction classes and the uh, ministry for our seniors is going to be delayed until after the first of the year. And I I really feel bad about that, but uh, I think you understand, and I, and I pray for your understanding. I'm going to continue, however, to uh, serve in preaching on a rotation, rotating basis with Pastor Odell, uh, calling on our shut-in people uh, on a regular monthly basis, and also those who are in the hospital. So uh, thank you for your understanding uh, of those things. God bless you.